Today's video is a double whammy. It is the fall furniture flipping challenge. It's me versus 20 to 30 other furniture flippers. And also it is part one of who has inspired me in my furniture flipping business. Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to the channel. I just want to start with saying a thank you to Lemons to Lemonade for hosting this fall flipping challenge. At the end of this video and in the description, I will have a link to the playlist so you make sure to check out all the other flippers videos as well. So this is a Pulaski Bombay style chest of drawers I found on Facebook Marketplace for $115 and we're going to give it a fall flip. I start all my furniture flips off by removing the hardware. And of course, first thing off the bat is I dropped the handle and kind of busted it to smithereens. I hope this is not any insight into how this flip is gonna go. So we have the choice to either make this a fall inspired piece or make it spooky like Halloween. So stay tuned and watch to see what I come up with. After the hardware is removed, my next step is to give the piece a thorough cleaning. That is a home mixture I have in my spray bottle, half a cup of white vinegar, two tablespoons of baking soda, let the bubble over happen. Once it's settled down, you're going to fill the bottle the rest of the way with some water and just keep refilling the bottle until as many times as you want to. The less plastic we use, the better it is for the environment. After thoroughly cleaning the piece, I have some warm water in my bucket and a new cloth, and I'm just going to give the piece a really good rinse to make sure that there's not any cleaning residue left behind. I'm going to give you guys a couple clues as to who this first furniture flipper is that has really inspired me. As soon as you have a guess to who it is, comment down below the first person to get it right. I will pin that comment. At the beginning of the video, I had the quote, a true artist is not one who is inspired, but one who inspires others. And this first person that I chose for part one, I considered an amazing furniture artist and they have definitely inspired me to take my furniture flips to the next level. Here I'm using a piece of 220 grit sandpaper over a sanding sponge and just scuff sanding the entire surface. After that, dust it off. I always use a feather duster to get the big loose dust off and then come back with a damp cloth to remove the remaining dust residue. I'm going to spray my primer today. So I'm using painter's tape to tape off the edges and across the opening of the drawer so it doesn't get inside the drawers. I'm trying out a new primer today, Krylon's Color Max Primer in Gray. This isn't a brand that I normally use, but I'm just happy that I found it because I haven't been able to find gray primer or gray spray primer for weeks in my area. I'm just going over the entire surface with a light coat of the primer. It has really great coverage though, so I actually only end up using one coat instead of my usual two coats of primer. You don't have to spray your primer. You could buy it in a can and roll it on with a foam roller or use a brush. So my first clue in who has inspired me, I mentioned that they are a furniture artist. The second clue is that this furniture artist has an accent. So if they were to suggest using a chip brush, sometimes it's hard to determine whether it's being cheap brush said or chip brush. Either way, I absolutely love the accent. It is completely endearing. I let the primer dry for two hours and then came back over with a very fine grade sanding sponge to sand it smooth and then wipe the dust residue back with a lint-free cloth. The drawers set into the dresser a little bit, so I decide to go ahead and take them out for painting. And the bottom one has a much bigger space, so to make a nice even line, I'm just gonna go ahead and tape that bottom bracket off. All right, let's get to adding a base coat. I'm using Dixie Bell's chalk paint in the Florida orange color. 
To me, Dixie Belle's chalk paint is a little thick, so I like to work with small amounts on my brush and then also mist the surface before I apply the paint just to kind of help thin it out. You can mist your brush, you can mist into the jar. Just I use a little bit of water to thin it out to make it go on a lot more smoother. When you're working on large sections, sometimes it, the paint can start to dry out before you're done getting it on there. You'll notice because it will start to tug on your brush and you can always take that water bottle mister and just mist the surface again to give yourself some more time to spread that paint over the areas that you need to. All right, so you guys ready to find out who the furniture artist is that has inspired me so much. Are you? Okay, okay, I'll tell you, it is a Katja. Her work is just a beautiful, creative, and it inspires me so much. From here on out in the video, I'm pretty much following one of her YouTube tutorials, so I will make sure to link that down below in the description. Now, at this part in her video, she is using Mermaid Tail by Dixie Belle. It is a beautiful turquoise color, but I opted to go with orange to kind of add my own spin to it, plus I want that fall or Halloween look for this fall challenge. The orange I picked is very opaque, so I ended up having to do two base coats. I let the first coat dry for a couple hours and then came back and added that second coat and then also let that dry for a few hours. And here's where we're at so far. Next comes the fun part. I'm using Dixie Belle's Patina Paint in Iron. It also comes in copper and a bronze. I'm just, I like the look that Katja got in her video, so I'm just following along her steps and doing what she did. A patina look is more like a rustic rough look, so I have a chip brush that I'm using with it, and I'm doing a stippling motion. So when strokes go back and forth or up and down, I'm doing dab, 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 dabbing this all over to give it some texture. On the bottom left corner of the top drawer, you can see some fake wood worm holes. I'm not a fan of those, so I put the paint on those areas all around the edges. You can really put this patina paint wherever you want to, but I find the edges and details is kind of normally where furniture pieces end up having wear and tear over the years. So this is where I'm at with the first coat, and you let that dry for a couple hours. And then I come back and add a second coat doing exactly what I did before using that stippling, the dab, dab, dab motion, going back over the exact same spots that I did before. But this time I'm not going to let it dry. You want it wet so I work in sections and grab the patina spray in green. It also comes in blue, but again, I'm just following Kacha's video. I like to do the squirts and then change the setting on the nozzle to do more of a mist. You get all kinds of patina effect. This stuff has a very strong odor, so I would do it in a heavy ventilated area. I have my garage door open and I'm wearing a respirator mask while I'm applying this. And I just repeat that process going over the entire piece again, working in sections, dab, 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 and then go over it with the green spray, with a jet spray, and then again with a mist spray. And then I let that set overnight so the patina can happen. The next morning I come out to some reaction, but not a whole lot, but I'm not super worried right now because I know that the process will keep reacting even for a while after I put top coat on. All right, and again, I'm just following the next step in Katja's video. I grab that Florida orange and I'm working the orange back into the patina. So I use the same directions that she suggests using Whenever you're in a mill section, you're gonna have a heavier or firmer brush stroke. And then as you get to the patina, you wanna work it in in a feather motion. So the closer you get to the patina paint, the lighter. So you're kind of going in an upward motion to where the orange paint feathers out to give it more of a blended transition between patina and between orange. 
I do that over the entire piece. And then as I'm going along as well, I dry brush. So I wipe the paint mostly off of my paintbrush and then dry brush over the patina areas to add a little bit more orange back into it. And again, I'm just following Katja's suggestions and pretty much her step-by-step -step from her video. I find her videos very easy to follow along and they just teach you that you're capable of a lot more than you thought. All right, the orange is pretty bright, so we're going to add some patina or age look to the orange part. I have bare decorative wax in clear, and I'm using a t-shirt piece just to wipe over the entire surface. Now, I will let you know that Dixie Bell's paints, waxes, top coats are made to work together. I, however, am not a fan of the consistency and how it works with the Dixie Bell waxes, so that is the only reason why I'm using Bare Clear Wax and not Dixie Bells. I find the Bare Wax just really easy to work with. It glides on really smoothly, and it's easy to tell the areas that you've hit and you have not because it changes the color of the orange just a little bit. After I get the clear wax on the entire surface, I don't even wait any time for it to dry and grab a lint-free cloth. Now, I'm not buffing or rubbing hard here. I'm just wiping over the surface to remove any excess of the clear. Then I grab my Anisome Black Wax. Again, Dixie Belle has their own black wax. I highly recommend using their products together, but this is what I have in stock. And like I said before, I'm not a fan of the Dixie Belle waxes. With the black wax, you want to work in sec sections. I'm using a chip brush to apply the black wax to the top area first. And then I go back over with a piece of very fine grade steel wool to give the black wax more of a blended in look. Once that is done, I grab the clear wax again with a t-shirt piece and wipe back or rub back the black wax even more till I get that level of grunge or worn look that I want. Every time I work with dark wax or black wax, it's the same process. It's put it on, blend it in with the steel wool, and then take it back off to the level that I want method. And I continue this process over the entire piece. Doing the coat of clear wax first just allows for the black wax to not hold on as much, making it easier for you to work off to the level of black wax or grunge that you want. Now, if you forget that clear coat wax, don't worry, Katja has you. She has a trick that's in her video that she shows how to work the black wax off if you forget that clear coat. And this is where we're at after the black wax is applied and then worked back off on the entire piece. That handle that I dropped is just not fixable in this state. So I found some off Amazon. It looks basically exactly the same and you can't even tell. So I just went with it. I lucked out in finding those for sure. I let the black wax sit for about an hour, grabbed a lamp-free cloth, used a good amount of pressure here so I could buff it. Next is Dixie Bell's Gilding Wax in Warm Gold. This definitely would not be a Katja inspired piece without some gold. So I grab an artist brush and I'm basically using like a, a dry brush method to apply this gold gilding wax to all the areas that I have the patina. I add a little bit extra to the curves and edges of the drawers, the corners. So this gilding wax can be used before your top coat or after. Now this is their older formula. Dixie Belle does have a newer formula. It's an oil based. I would top coat first and then do the oil based gold if that's what you have in 
in stock. If you are using the same Gildy Wax I am before top coat as well, a little tip is to add a little bit more gold than what you think because the top coat will wipe it back some. I let that gilding wax set for an hour and then grab my Dixie Bells Gator Hide and the Gator Hide application sponge. It's the blue sponge, which I put in a pantyhose to help control the amount of top coat that the sponge absorbs and also helps remove any of the streaks from applying the top coat. The Gator Hide sponge makes it really easy to apply. I just work in sections, working in long swipes, and then I go back over the section and dab up any drips that I may have. I let each top coat dry for about two hours in between and then come and apply a second coat. I ended up doing three coats total of the Gator Hide. Now you can see that the patina areas is still pretty dark, but it the reaction will keep happening even a couple days after I apply the Gator Hide. So I let this all dry and let it sit for about a week. All right, here's a quick before shot of our beautiful but outdated Pulaski Bombay chest that I found on Facebook Marketplace. And here it is now. Just look at that patina. There's white, there's yellow, there's orange, there's brown, there's black, and there's gold in it. So many layers, so much dimension. I absolutely love this look. The patina on this piece just gives it that rustic charm. The orange gives it the perfect fall tint. I can just see this in any entryway, like greeting your family members as they come over for the holidays. Katja's video made it so easy to follow along and create this look. She not only inspires me, but millions of other people. An absolute amazing furniture artist. All right, the numbers. I paid $115 for the piece, spent $25 in materials, spent five hours flipping the piece and I have it listed on Facebook Marketplace for $425. That comes out to be $57 an hour. I hope you guys enjoyed this fall inspired flip. I will pop up the playlist here to the other furniture flippers in the fall challenge, as well as Kacha's video that made this look happen. Make sure to tune in next week because I will be having a giveaway. Also, it'll be part two of who has inspired me in my furniture business. As always, until next time.